Alright, so what's going on guys? My name is CG Build and welcome back to another video. So today's gonna be a little bit of a different video. As I mean, as you can tell, I mean I'm doing the I mean it's not no anyways. So today we're gonna be doing a like next step after you get a keyboard video. I don't know what I'm gonna call it yet, but I'm just that's what the whole premise of this is. So whenever you get a keyboard and you wanna do your next steps, either you wanna mod it or whatever that may be, I'm this is what this video is gonna be about. It's gonna be mainly for like the beginner people. But I'm not saying that like people that do this more often won't get something from this. I've been getting a lot of requests recently to do videos like this, so that's what we're doing. I'm not saying I'm an expert or anything, by no means, but I've done it quite a bit. I think I have a pretty decent track record. In the description, there will be everything that I'm going to be talking about, so you can just go down there and find it if you are interested. But yeah, for the most part, I'm excited to make this, this keyboard great and do it with you. And uh, yeah, it's going to be kind of like my normal videos, just more talking over and like doing the actual build with you so you'll, you'll know more information all right so first we're going to go over everything that you're going to need first to make it a little bit more easier on you now usually this comes with the box you're going to be getting your keyboard in keycap puller and a switch puller now depending on if you're going to be lubing switches you're going to need your lube plus anything like brushes stuff like that the lube i usually use for everything is crytox 205 grade zero this one is from kinetic labs i think kinetic labs is great they usually do Really good job. Now, of course, this is a tray here. That I mean, if you want a tray, you can have a tray. But the Connect Labs, once again, they come with this. They have like a package deal, and that's pretty cool. Now, for the brushes. Now, I have two different brushes. One is for actually lubing switches, and the other one's for stabs. Now, I use the stabs one because sometimes I use different lube. Mainly, if it's not uh, Crytox 205 grade zero, it's going to be dielectric grease. So, um, yeah, got the got the the two brushes. These are pretty essential because I mean, how else are you gonna put it on? Next, like I already mentioned, is the dielectric grease. This is, I mean, it's for staves. It's really thick, and it helps a lot of people use it. Some people don't. I haven't been using it too recently. I just want to throw it in here because I want to let you know this is an, an option for staves. So, yeah. Now, besides the equipment that you're going to use for the uh, switches and stabilizers and stuff like that, besides all of this, you're going to, of course, want your keyboard. Now, this is, I mean, it's important, you know, you're going to want the keyboard. So it's fully built. You can just take off the keycaps and switches and you'll be good. Just this is not, this is the bare bones set, even though this one wasn't, but it's like a bare bones set. So yeah, this is the AJAZ ACO81. It's a really great board. It has a little cat paw up there. It's really cool. Now you're also going to want your switches. Now my switches are in this little glass jar. These are the Kinetic Labs Hippo switches. Now these are a little bit heavier of a switch and I really enjoy them. You're definitely going to have to lube these if you're going to want to use them. I mean, you don't have to, but for just sound purposes, I would lube them. Do a little sound test. I don't know if you're going to hear that because there's a lot of compression on it. But now besides that, you're going to also want keycaps. Now, I don't have my keycaps with me right now. They're over there. I don't feel like going to get them. But keycaps, imagine. Bam. You got them. Now, of course, next is a screwdriver. We're going to be, I mean, some, some boards use like a hex screwdriver and it's kind of annoying. But this one actually just uses a normal Phillips head screwdriver. So we got one of those. Next up, something that I've kind of learned that I've always had is a pair of uh, tweezers. Mainly because for switch purposes, you can use it or you could use it for uh, just anything really. Just I don't know why I always end up using them on a board. So that's just kind of what happens. So yeah. Next up, you need a measuring stick. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> next. Is the scissors, um, mainly because different mods, and um, I always end up needing scissors because I need to cut something. So, not necessarily for every board, but a lot of the times I do end up needing this. Yeah, no more playing around. Let's go ahead and get to the building of a keyboard. Now, actually, I forgot to mention, now if you are going to be lubing your switches, I would advise you to do it beforehand. Now, uh, the reason for this is because I like to do a little test sample before actually starting to do mods and opening up the keyboard because you want to know exactly what mod you're going to be doing. So now if you're not going to lose your switches, you don't have to. If you got some like good switches like the Echo CS Silvers, those are pretty decent switches. You don't have to like lube them. They sound pretty good. But if you do need to lube your switches like you would have to if you were going to use these uh, Kinetic Labs Hippo switches, then that's what you're going to want to do first. You get your lube switches. You put a couple in. Make sure you do all the stabilizer ones just so you can get the feel of the stabilizers. See if they're going to need work or not. And you also put a couple in here and just kind of do a typing sound test. I'm going to get a couple of the switches out here. And we're going to pop them in place. Make sure I'm in focus. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Just pop them in place. And we'll go get the keycaps. And we'll put the keycaps on. And then we'll do a test. All right, now. Once you've done that, now you could do the whole board just to get a whole feel of it. But I'm only going to do this because, I mean, 
practice time saver you get a pretty good test out of this so that's what we're going to do now i didn't know what keycaps we're going to use so i kind of just went over there and, and <laughs> checked so i'm going to go ahead and use the seal keycaps from kinetic labs i think these look absolutely phenomenal i love the way these things look so yeah we're going to use these and we're going to do a little test and yeah that's pretty much it So as you can tell, I mean, it's not a bad sounding keyboard stock. Now, hopefully this is the same thing for you if you're doing this side by side with me. But if not, then you can, I think you can agree. It sounds pretty good stock. Now, there are definitely issues. It's very hollow and pingy. Now, um, it is a gas key mounted board. So, I mean, I'll go over that in just a minute. But it is pretty pingy and hollow. So, I mean, as you can, like, especially the enter in, this, in the backspace. There's a lot of vibration. Now, there's a couple mods we can do to fix that. Now, I kind of know I have an idea of what kind of mods we're going to do. Uh, definitely probably going to tape it because it's just very bland. So, yeah, the next part is go ahead and take all of this off and then we'll disassemble the whole thing. So, when it comes to disassembling the board, this one is a Phillips head screwdriver. So, we're just going to knock this out real quick. Little tip, do not lose your screws, man. This is, it's not even just a tip. Just, just don't be dumb. You feel me? But now that we are done with that, you go ahead. And you undo it now. I'm trying to get it off. I don't know if I can. There we go. So this is the top plate. And something I like to do, I like to uh, make sure you're you're remembering not how to put it together, but I mean that would be good too. Don't mess that up. Looking for anything that could be upgraded in a sense with mods. So in this sense, see how it's fully aluminum and there's these little pads in here. Now this is what I was talking about. You can replace these with thicker ones that are going to be more beneficial now i don't have any right but you could do that this is the plate this does have some silicone like a silicone in between we'll take that out in a minute but that's pretty much it man it's a very simple board as you can tell you see the the foam little pads which this does do a really good job of, of a bouncy keyboard already so the gaskets on here are very well done it's kind of dirty though i don't know I guess it's just been sitting here for a while. But yeah, it's very well made. Not a lot of dampening in here because they want as much balance as they can. Dude, I'm excited to show y'all what this thing's going to turn out in the end because I have a pretty good idea. Now, just taking a look at everything, this is pretty much it. You've disassembled it. You have top plate, bottom plate, or mount for the keyboard, case, whatever. Then you have the PCB. Looks pretty good if I do say so myself. Then you have the foam in between. The plate, which this is an aluminum plate, and uh, not one, not my favorite plate ever, but I mean, is what it is. Then you have the stabs. The stabs. This one is actually not from this board. Clearly, it's from another one, but I didn't. I was missing one, so just for this video purposes, I went ahead and put it in there. So yeah, then I separate the screws, and yeah. So this is where the mods come in. Now, one thing I did notice when I did that sound test was it is very dull. Like I said. So one thing to fix that is to do the tape mod. So what the tape mod is, and I've done it in a lot of my different videos. So if you watch my videos often, then you've definitely seen this. But pretty much you get some uh, painter's tape and you put it on the back of your PCB. Now, what this does usually gives it a deeper sound profile, which in budget boards, it really helps with this one. I mean, it could. I mean, it definitely, it definitely is going to sound good. I'm, I'm going to tell you that right now. Now, what I like to usually do is put three layers. Now, because I've worked with not this exact keyboard, but another keyboard, just different colorway, just like it, uh, a, three was too much. So I'm going to do two. Now, once again, I mean, just little tips and stuff like that. I mean, it's the more you do, the more you're going to be familiar and by the way, scissors came in clutch. The more you do, the better you're just going to know of what the territory holds and just being better at doing keyboards and stuff like that. That's, it's just how it goes. I mean, you you might mess up the first couple, you know what I mean? And just because I, just because I do it a lot, I kind of know what's, what's going to sound good and what's not. And 
I mean, I surprise myself all the time when I'm like, oh, that sounds way better than what I thought. All right, so that is the first layer. I know I said I was going to do one, man, but I really want to do another. I just feel like it could really help. So I might do another. Yeah, I'm going to do another. And because I only wanted to put one, I'm not going to put it directly on top where I wanted it because I, I kind of want to test this out also. But I think that maybe instead of putting them right on top of each other, like over and over again on different layers, you could, and maybe this would be a better sound in, in general, is if you kind of go over and maybe even do it a little bit diagonal, then maybe it could cover up the holes of where the sound was leaking out to begin with, and maybe it could be better. But that's just, that could just be me being dumb and not knowing uh, how to do things right. So I'm going to diagonal this one, and we're going to see if maybe it sounds better. I don't know how we would notice if it didn't, you know, just, it's going to sound good. I know it is. Just wait. All right, so that is the tape mod, and it looks pretty good. I mean, it's it's kind of weird that you put tape on <laughs> on a, a PCB. It's like, I spent a lot of money for this, and I put $2 tape on it. So, like, <laughs> that is the first mod. Now, uh, moving on to the next one. We're going to put that gonna put that up here. Actually, we're going to put a tape down just in case. Now, the next one I want to do is... I want to CG mod this. Like I said, I wanted I want a stiffer experience. Now these are I think these are like really close to like already good. Let me see. So if I were to put this in, <laughs> I think it's like really close to like already being perfect. I think I might do two. So pretty much what this does is just gives it more foam. All the pinginess will hopefully go away, and that's kind of what we're looking for. That's what that's what the whole CG mod is going to be. It's just medical wrap. Um, you cut it to size, put it in the case. Usually. Usually you do it like this, you get the case, and then you put it in, after you cut it to size, make sure it fits and everything, and then you, yeah, bam. And usually I get a pretty thick medical wrap, just because, probably better, I mean, I don't know, you could probably get like a cheaper one, maybe save some money. Now I want to talk about other mods that you could possibly do to a keyboard, right? Because I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to, this isn't the most mod heavy build I've ever done, but in, in terms of different ideas and stuff like that there's you can search youtube man there's so many different combinations and different mods you can do it's 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 in, it's it's insane right just how many things you can actually do to make a keyboard better now pretty much your imagination is endless with this you could do so many different things man it's not it's not a lot you know what i mean it's people make it seem like it's just so uh difficult to do uh some of the stuff i do and it's like it's kind of giving it away but like I'm, it's not hard what I what I do here on YouTube, you know. <laughs> I just kind of throw things together <laughs> and just kind of hope to God it sounds good. And if it doesn't, I take it apart and I redo it. You know what I mean? Just it's kind of where kind of where it goes to. So um, anyone can do this. And as you can tell, it's I mean you're not going to get that bounce yet. But hold on, still have still have a little bit of bounce. I ended up finding the actual other gaskets from this box that it comes in. So. I went ahead and put those on want the top plate just so that whenever you go ahead and get ready to put that in top uh, part of the case when you put it on it has more foam on it so it's not going to be uh, metal on metal as much it's still a little bit there but like because there's stuff in the way that those sounds can't go through right that's at least my I mean this is like a in real life thing with me you get to know inside my head maybe not always make sense but I can make a keyboard sound good. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much all the mods. Um, now you could maybe do some more. Uh, yeah, if you want to leave them down in the comments of different mods that you like or things that you do to your keyboards that you like, go ahead. For now, we're just going to go ahead and rebuild the whole keyboard. Look at these stabs, right? Some stabs wobble. These are pretty snug, so they're pretty good. But some of them wobble. A way to fix that is before you put them in, you... Uh, just gonna use this real quick you can take that up oh god that's probably not good and then you can get some tape which i like to use this uh medical wrap tape cut little pieces and put it fold it underneath 
and then close it on top and it should make it way more tight and that's I've done it in a couple of my other videos if you want to go check those out but it works really good if it does do that but that's usually on like budget boards that happens all right so uh assembled it and now um thankfully the space bar at least sounds pretty good now I did do the mod I'm fixing to tell you already to this but um yeah here's a little sound test see if you can hear it I think it's I think it sounds amazing, man. I mean, it's pretty good. The, the modern things to tell you now is if your stabilizers is that final touch. You know what I mean? If your stabilizer still doesn't seem right, and you tried other mods or whatever, the thing I like to do, and a lot of it's been popular recently, is lubing the butt. What it is is that you get it, get your uh, stabilizer, and you go ahead and get a syringe. Hopefully, it's already had the lube in it and stuff. And you put it inside, and you squeeze some of the lube in to get fill the holes that are in there, and also the wire, and then that's how you do it. It's like a little final touch, you know? So, how I go about this, and I'm going to try to hopefully get this on camera as much as possible. I'm going to pick it up with the tweezers. Pick it up. Don't pull it up all the way, as if it's like, you know what I mean? Like, don't pull it up all the way to where it's like, oh, I can't move anymore. I go just before that. Like, I go all the way up, and then I go down just a little bit, just so I'll be able to get the syringe in there really well and how you know what side it is wherever the wire is that's where you put it in don't do the other side that, would, that doesn't work like that but so you get it pick it up right before the end of it stick it inside and you let loose give it some of that lube don't do too much just just enough and you'll see it come out and then you kind of what i like to do is work the stabilizer up and down just to make sure it's all in there get all going and then if after I notice that it's kind of just clumped up, I'll kind of get my brush and I'll go in and I'll go in and out. Do the same thing on the other side. Uh, one thing I will say is that whenever you put keycaps on, uh, sometimes it can feel over lubed, but just give it some time. It'll work out. It'll work itself out. I already did to all the I already did to all the other ones. So now we're just gonna pop in the switches, and then yeah, that's put the keycaps on, do a little sound test, do a little B-roll of how good this thing looks, and that's pretty much it, man. I'm excited for this. Let's see this final production right here let's see this Alright, so what do you think of the sound test? I think it turned out pretty good. I don't know if I was expecting that. And I know this whole video wasn't about the keyboard and everything. I, I, I'm, ha I'm happy that I finally got this video out. I've been wanting to do a video like this for a while now, and I think it was pretty beneficial. I want this video to be really just, like, go into the comments and you'll be, like, happy to see, like, wow, this guy is going to be doing this build. And, like, oh, that would be pretty cool. And it just it ignites your imagination of what you could do and different ideas and... That's what we're all here for. Once again, I really hope this video would help some of you do something, you know, maybe you can apply to your mods or different future builds or whatever. Hopefully it helped. But yeah, that is the end of the video. I had a really great time. I know this video is pretty long and I'm sorry. I try to cut out a lot of the boring stuff and just do the interesting parts, but there's a lot that needed to stay. But yeah, once again, that is the end of the video. Um, once like go in the comments, be nice, be super friendly with everybody. If you see a cool build idea or put your specs down below and then we'll like people can comment. Like, oh, that would be pretty cool. Or if you have a future build, put it down in the comments, man. We're all here. But yeah, that is the end of the video. Hopefully you did enjoy and you did learn from this. But yeah, uh, I know this video is already pretty long, so I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. So yeah, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.